Okay class dismissed, remember projects are due in next week. Hey girls, we should make a video on Egyptian mathematics. It would be so interesting. Yeah that would be a great idea. Hey guys before we start, why is maths important to us? Well I use maths for shopping. Maths makes us smart, like that's why we go to school, ha. Huh? You use it for counting the calories and chocolate? Come on guys, that's pathetic. Looks like we have some research to do. Yay, let's go explore, Egypt. Hey, we're headed off to Egypt. Okay. Will that be first class or coach? First class please. Okay enjoy your flight. Thank you, have a great day. Hello, I will be your assistant at your time at Egypt. Was there anything you need to know? Hello, the girls and I are here to explore Egyptian maths. Before we start, Jess would like to ask you a question. Hey, what is maths and what did Egyptians do with it? Well mathematics is the study of quantity, structure, space, and change. Egyptian found out the basic of maths, using geometry, symbols and equipment. And, the maths founded here is just a building block, for the future mathematicians. Wow! That's just so cool! Yeah, I know right! I guess you learn something new every day. Well, you know girls, maths helps us in everyday living, it teaches us a bit about our history, it helps you financially and you can even use it while you're working. Well, we should probably get a move on. We don't want to get lost out here. It will be dark soon. Okay then, let's go, follow me. Hehe, <laughs> these camels are just so cool, they can hold everything. Back to maths, as I was saying before. Future mathematicians will be able to build more complex things because of some of the basic maths founded in Egypt. Engineers and architects can build complex, stable structures because of it. Maths is very important in our growing world and to future generations. Here we are. We will be staying in tents for tonight. So before we start anything, we need to know the symbols used in Egyptian maths. Ooh, it will be my honor to explain the symbols, please sir. Very well then Niven, continue. Basically like we use numbers for maths, Egyptians used shapes and pictures, take a look, for number 1, they used a strike or line, for number 2, they used two strikes or lines, for number 3, they used three strikes or lines, for number 4, they used four strikes or lines, two on top of each other, for number 5, they used five strikes or lines. 3 on top of 2. For number 6, they used 6 strikes or lines. 3 on top of 3. For number 7, they used 7 strikes or lines. 3 on top of 4. For number 8, they used 8 strikes or lines. 4 on top of 4. For number 9, they used 9 strikes or lines. 3 on top of 3 on top of 3. For number 10, they used half a circle or a curved line. For number 100, they used sort of like a, whirl, for number a thousand, they used a plant-like picture, for number ten thousand, they used a finger with its fingernails, for number one hundred thousand, they used a frog, for number one million, they used a man, in a kneeling position. These were the symbols used for counting in Egyptian maths, a simple example would be this. This would be twenty thousand, plus one thousand, plus two hundred, plus thirty plus 7, which will equal 21,237, don't worry it's pretty simple. The way for reading and writing numbers is quite simple, the higher number is always written in front of the lower number. And where there is more than one row of numbers, the reader should always start at the top left. Thank you for that Niven, that was a great introduction. Egyptians discovered the main parts of algebra, now, Benar I heard you know some information. Please share with the class. Well, I was reading a book last week and I did some research. This is what I found out. Maths history in Egypt. In terms of using mathematics every day, the Egyptians were masters and had some cool techniques. Their mathematicians were so skilled that great Greek mathematicians such as Thales and Pythagoras learned techniques in Egypt. It all started with the Rin Papyrus. Here is a picture of it. This is a papyrus sheet, it seems to be a sort of guide to ancient Egyptian mathematics. It contains 87 math problems, including 
including equations, volumes of cylinders and prisms, and areas of triangles, rectangles, circles and trapezoids, and fractions. The equations found on the Rind Papyrus. The equations include the equations we should know on area of prism, cylinder, triangle, rectangle and circle, and the volume of prism and cylinder. Algebra history in Egypt. Together with geometry, analysis and number theory, algebra is one of the main branches of pure mathematics. Ancient civilizations wrote out algebraic expressions using only normal abbreviations, but by medieval times, Islamic mathematicians were able to talk about powers of the unknown x, and work out the basic algebra of polynomials, without yet using modern symbolism. The most important bit about Egyptian maths is history, so I thank you for that Bernard. He he he, no problem at all. Did you find anything Kate? Well I found out that the eye of Horus was used for fractions. It's really quite interesting, here have a look. As you can see here, each part of the eye represents a different fraction. Using these fractions, the Egyptians were able to record prescriptions, land, and grain. The eye of Horus fraction system based on the eye of Horus symbol, uses halves for each fraction. The system is based on halves. Half of one equals one half half of one half equals one fourth and so on until the smallest value of one sixty fourth. By adding together the values of different sections, you can create different fractions. Hope you enjoyed my information, back to you Zach. Okay, last of all, Jess, what will you present to us today? Well I found some info about Egyptian pyramids. Firstly, I found out that Egyptian pyramids were built as burial places for kings and queens. They used slaves to build the pyramids. The construction of a pyramid involved, ramps being placed around the pyramid, while blocks of stone were pulled up on sledges. The Egyptians used Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the hypotenuse of the triangle-shaped ramp. They worked out that if they used wooden sledges the large stone blocks moved easily. Each pyramid had different levels. The Egyptians had to calculate how much stone they needed and what kind of shape it had to be in order to stay in place. If the Egyptians hadn't have structured them this way, we wouldn't be able to see them like we do today. Thank you Jess. The information was very interesting. Okay, that's it guys for today. Let's go get some rest. <laughs>